this is my collection. So these are my books. The first one, Mysterious World of Sherlock Holmes, it's like a big non-fiction book all about the character. Uh, it's got quite a, a good bit at the beginning about Arthur Conan Doyle as well. It's a big full colour, not really wonderfully well put together, but it's all right. Uh, the best thing about this one is, if I can just find it, these um, full colour illustrations taken at the 221B Baker Street in London, the Sherlock Holmes Museum. These are just amazing. There's so much detail. The actual museum is fantastic as well. I definitely recommend going there and checking it out. It's not worth going all the way to London for, but if you're already in London, you should check it out. So these are my actual books again of the stories. This is the first one I got, which is the short stories collection. So this has got all five short story collections beginning with the adventures of the first story being Scandal in Bohemia. There it is. Um, so just a really good copy and I love going back to it. I've read quite a few of the stories over again. Um, so then I kind of had a little hunt on eBay for the matching sets and I got this one, The Long Stories. So this has got the four novels in it, Study in Scarlet, Sign of Four, Hound of the Baskervilles and The Valley of Fear. Um, yep, so that's pretty cool. These ones were all approved by Arthur Conan Doyle before he died. I think they were published in the 20s. Uh, this is the Professor Challenger series. So there was, I think there's four in here. I can't remember. Um, the most famous one obviously being uh, The Lost World which was made into a movie very cool and then I also picked up this one which is a very beat up version um, this is just general short stories by Arthur Conan Doyle this is one of my favorites actually his short stories are just incredible there are so many different subjects each of those is a set of short stories so there must be over a hundred short stories in here and they're all really good. Okay, so this is by uh, Kim Newman, who I'm a really big fan of. This is The Hound of the D'Urbervilles. It's um, basically Sherlock Holmes stories told from the point of view of Professor Moriarty and Sebastian Moran. Um, and it is very well written. He's a great writer, great author. Uh, the only thing is, because it's all written from the point of view of a villain, it is kind of depressing to read. And here are some of the titles, the hilariously uh, mixed up versions of the classics. But yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. He's awesome. Uh, he was friends, he is friends with Neil Gaiman, and he came up with the idea whilst Neil, Neil Gaiman was writing a crossover between Sherlock Holmes and Lovecraft. So they then went and got another a load of other writers to do their own ones and that's what this is most of them are rubbish but Neil Gaiman's which is the first one Study in Emerald is really really good so it's worth it for the first one but I wouldn't recommend buying this volume uh, so this one um, I have a huge problem with I think it's dreadful it looks really good it's a nice kind of looking little book but the actual story is really anti Conan Doyle why would anybody buy it if it's anti Conan Doyle? If you don't like Conan Doyle, you're not going to buy a book about Hound of the Baskervilles. This is pretty cool. This is kind of like a little fake. It's supposed to be Moriarty's um, personal um, notebook journal thing. So it's full of these like diary entries and bits and pieces. It's mainly biographic about the writing of the stories. And it's also got some funny stuff in it. It looks good, but the actual writing isn't that great. So. If you can find it cheap, I'd get it just for the look of it. Uh, all right, this is amazing. This is the case notes of Sherlock Holmes. Um, I got this from the works for um, quite cheap. Um, just really well presented. Just looks so cool inside. It's kind of supposed to look like a dossier of information. It covers four main stories, going into loads of detail about those actual stories. And it also includes all this stuff inside these like evidence bags, which are like um, sort of real props from the stories. There's the dancing men. 
just so cool so well put together definitely worth investing in um this is weird this is like a sort of i've got a dracula one of these as well it's a choose your own adventure kind of thing i mean well no it's not really that it's basically it's a story from the point of view of watson and it's like a mystery and you have to try and solve the case whilst watson's trying to solve the case so whenever he comes up with evidence you get the evidence stuck inside the book and you kind of come up with your own solution and then at the very end you can like try and solve it and it's sort of the solution is sealed in this envelope here it is in the back uh, so then you can check out and see whether you got it right the actual story is rubbish unfortunately it's a good idea though looks good so this last one's a bit of a joke this is my puzzle collection so they're kind of like parlor game story puzzle things it's like um like twister word puzzles that you just sit around and tell your friend about some of them are really difficult though um yeah but it looks good yep so these are my books so in my dvds obviously first off i've got the classic 1939 basil rathbone tv series for a lot of people this was definitive homes um personally i'm not really a fan even though this box set is amazing because they make watson a bumbling idiot and i don't think that's true to the stories um but yeah still a nice box set uh, so then i got one of my absolute all-time favorites which is the hammer horror um hound of the baskervilles from 1959 with peter cushing and christopher lee um truly fantastic uh, so Peter Cushing went on to do a BBC TV series which was really low budget but at least he put in the effort he's really good in it but the rest of it's not that great um, and there's no need for them to have so many DVD discs in this box set it's crazy could have fit it all on one disc uh, this one's not very good this is uh, Murder by Decree uh, from 1978 it's like uh, Sherlock Holmes investigating Jack the Ripper, and it's just a bit too low budget. Now this is utterly brilliant. Any self-respecting Sherlock Holmes fan should have a copy of this. This is the Jeremy Brett ITV TV series from the 80s. Um, it's sometimes word for word, the stories, it's so close. It's absolutely amazing. It just really holds up. Um, so definitely check that out if you haven't already, which I assume you have. So next is the uh, Young Sherlock Holmes, produced by Steven Spielberg. Um, I absolutely love this movie. I used to watch it when I was a kid. The music is so good. Hilariously redesigned for the Downey Jr. movies. Uh, this is kind of weird. This is like a made-for-TV movies, two of them, starring Christopher Lee as Sherlock Holmes. Again, really low budget, unfortunately, but um, they give it a good job. Okay, so this next one is the best of all of my collection. This is Murder Rooms. So this is Joseph Bell and Conan Doyle involved in investigating crimes in Edinburgh. And so it's sort of semi-autobiographical, semi but also a bit fake. Uh, but it's just amazing. It's so well done. It's got a good budget and everything. Uh, so the BBC carried on with some re um, redo, including this one of Hannah the Baskervilles, which I hate. I don't think he's very good at all. They use CGI. It's a really bad idea. Uh, and they also did uh, The Lost World. Uh, and this is a really nice box set. It's supposed to look like a book. Now, The Lost World, even though that's CGI, that's actually really good. So I don't know why it got so bad with Hound of the Baskervilles, but there we go. Uh, and then they did this kind of... Uh, this is a bit weird. It's uh, like another true story of Sherlock Holmes, like a biography kind of movie. Uh, it's worth checking out, but it's not amazing. So then I've got the Robert Downey Jr. Uh, DVD, uh, sorry, Blu-rays. It's kind of a cool lenticular cover and a steel book for the second one. I really love these movies. Um, I know some Holmes fans don't. I don't get it. I think it's bloody awesome. Uh, and then the Stephen Moffat Sherlock series. I've got this Blu-ray box set of season one and two. I do not have season three because it was a pile of shit. So there we go.
So this is a board game I've got. This one is amazing. Um, 221B Baker Street, the Master Detective game. It's a bit like Cluedo, but it's like five times better. So you kind of shoot around the board, you go to all these different places, and each different place there's a clue. So it's not just um, a crossing stuff off, you actually get clues to a case that has characters in it and everything. So you go to the clue book, you find your clue, um, and then you try and solve the case. And each of you get to play as these cool little Sherlock dudes. There's a poopy brown one. Uh, and then you write down on your solution checklist, and you try and solve the case. So the best bits of my Sherlock Holmes collection uh, would be Murder Rooms, the BBC TV series. It's just so good. It's just I can't tell you how good this is. If you can find a good copy of it, um, it's because it goes into the idea of Arthur Conan Doyle and his sort of biography, um, as well as the Sherlock Holmes kind of character. But it's just it is really is as good as everybody says. You've got to check it out. Brilliant. Obviously, the classic Jeremy Brett ITV TV series. You know, a good box set that has all of them in. You probably get a better looking one on Blu ray now, but you should definitely have this. It is brilliant. Um, and finally, this, which I really, really love. Um, it was because, partly because it didn't cost me very much, it was like $4.99, um, and it's full colour and it just looks fantastic. But the best thing is, is these little pouches that have all this stuff in, the like evidence bags of like things you can put up. Like I like to, you know, frame them or you know, kind of put them on the side as like a bit of a display, like that kind of stuff. I just love that. So that was really a great purchase. It looks great, and I definitely recommend that. So those were the best parts of my collection, and that was my Sherlock Holmes collection.